the number goes on. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy Thursday. Welcome to um, Impress Arts hand stamping class. Uh, today, right behind me, we are doing a family jumble necklace. So we'll be able to learn how to stamp letters in a straight line, vertical, and leave initials. Um, I see a couple of you are turning on your cameras, which I love to see who we're stamping with. Hi, Lisa. Uh, so if you're not shy, hi, Roseanne, Gail, Mindy. So if you're not shy, please turn on your cameras. We love seeing who's stamping with us. Um, so as people are tuning in, please, in the comments, um, write where you're stamping from. I see Helen's from Brockport, New York. So you're just upstate from us in Long Island. Um, if you don't know, or if you're new, my name is Jen. I um, handle the marketing at ImpressArt. Anything you see from the step-by-steps, the words on the packaging, um, I help Rita on the Facebook Lives, all of her social media postings, um, and whatever Rita wants me to do, basically. Um, I'm here with Rita today, who's our design director, and she is actually the creative mind behind all of our projects that you see. Um, so I'm going to throw it over to Rita so she can introduce herself. Hi guys, welcome. It's nice to see some of you. Let's see, let's scroll down. How do I do that? <laughs> uh, I think you swipe left. Oh, I right. see Roseanne. Let's see, I feel like I'm, which the, Jen, you're too young to remember this. I think it was like the chuckle patch. No, it was romper room with looking into the, the magic mirror. Hi, Mindy. Oh. Right, Gail, Gail said that. Oh, yes, right? Yep, that's it. Jen's too young to remember Ramba Room. Um, Linda, Brenda, Brent is at work. I see that. <laughs> so it's nice to see everyone. And I hope um, the weather is getting better for a lot of you. I know a lot of our friends in Texas was, um, and in the mid states was uh, inundated with weather that you don't normally have. So sun is shining. And um, it's almost Friday, so that's a good thing. Today we're gonna be doing a jumble necklace. I'm gonna be using straight sticker guides and I will show you how to line up vertically and horizontally using the guides in your sticker guide book. Or if you have your bracelet sticker guides, you could use those as well. Um, I'm going to, I like more of a mixed metals feel, so I'm gonna go with stamping on aluminum, alchemy, and, brass um and if you have some and you're a beginner um bring some out and you will definitely feel the difference between having to stamp on a harder metal as opposed to stamping on a softer metal so we're going to be using well i'm going to be using the three millimeter austin font that is an exclusive font for michael's from impress arts um if you have another font available, please feel free to use that. Um, and with that being said, I think we will get started, Jen. So I'm gonna throw it back to Jen. She's gonna go over some of our Facebook Live times. And while well, I set up. All right, so today's Thursday. So every Tuesday and Thursday, we actually do our own Facebook Lives on our Facebook page at impressart.com. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can come over to our wonderful, welcoming, creative community and join Rita and I as we teach you um, anything about tool talks. This week, we were talking about our multifunction hammer. Um, we do inspirational projects. So last week, Rita did this like daft dome egg for Easter. Uh, we talk about sales on our Facebook Lives. And anytime you have a question, um, or you want us to do a specific live, you can DM us and we'll put it on our list of things um, that we will be doing throughout the month. Uh, during this class and also during our lives, I'm the person normally in the chat room. So as Rita's going through our project, um, I will be putting links in from the Michael's website of the products that she's using. So if you have any questions on the product um, and Rita can't answer them, from uh, sometimes like she can't read her phone while she's stamping. I will answer the question um, in the chat room. Um, and if I, for some reason, we don't answer your question, 
feel free to DM us on social media. So either on Instagram, on Facebook, or reach out to support at impressart.com and we will get that question answered for you. So without further ado, because I don't want to waste up any more time, I'm going to throw it back to Rita because I think she's ready to start standing. All right, we are ready. Okay, guys, so an important little bit of information. When you are stamping with Impress Art products or stamping with any products for that matter, you're going to want a steel block in front of you. You are going to want to use um, the Impress Art Argo Angle Hammer. It is designed specifically for metal stamping. It has a brass head. Um, with the brass head, why we suggest using the brass head is that brass is soft. It absorbs the shock of you hitting um, your hammer onto your steel stamps. It leaves a really nice and even impression in your metals. It's not going to bounce and you're not gonna get a double impression. So if you're using a regular household hammer with a stainless steel head and you're getting a double impression or a ghost impression, ghost impression meaning you're getting your letter and then above a little bit, you're getting another impression of it. It's because when you hit stainless against stainless, it bounces. So by using the brass head hammer, it absorbs that shock of hitting that stamp. Okay, um, so this is a four by four block. Um, Michaels has the two by two and I believe they will be stocking the four by four block in the near future. We are also using the three millimeter Austin font from that's um, exclusively for Michaels. All right, this is a nice hand lettered font. It's a little bit on the wide side. All right, and um, when you're filling it in because it has such a, a, a wide gap in the letters, you're gonna have to give it a little bit more dry time with your enamel. So we'll walk through that process after. We're gonna be using the upper and the lower. They do have numbers available. I also pulled out some different metals. So if you have anything in your boxes and your metal stamping boxes with holes in it already, feel free to use that. Okay, I'm gonna show you how you could punch your hole in your blanks. Okay, or if you already have your hole in them, that's great too. I'm gonna to be working with a mixture of brass and alchemy, which is a tin-based alloy, very similar to pewter. It's nice and soft, and I do suggest using it um, for our beginners. It makes it easy to stamp into, and it holds your impression very nicely. You're gonna notice that stamping into a soft metal and stamping into a harder metal, such as your brass and your copper, it's a little bit more difficult you're gonna need a little bit more force when hitting your stamps with your hammer. All right, so if you are a beginner, I suggest pulling out any of the aluminum and the alchemy that you might have in your bead box tray or wherever you keep your metal stamping blanks. Okay, and we're gonna walk through this project together. So the first thing I want you to do is pull out your circle, whichever your, your choice. I'm gonna mix my metals today. I'm going to start with my large first. Okay. What you're going to want to do is if you don't have a hole in your blank, you want to make sure that you have your screw down hole punch. A handheld hole punch is not going to work with the gauges of your premium blanks that you buy at Michael's. So definitely if you have a punch, you have a blank with no holes in it, definitely use your screw down hole punch. And how I like to do that is I just like to take my marker. Oh, that's a silver marker. Mm -mm. Take a Sharpie marker, just mark where I want my hole, leave a dot, come in with my screw down hole punch. Do we all see that dot there? I'm going to put my punch right on that dot, okay? When I say punch, I mean my screw down punch, okay? Make sure it's nice and secure. Pierce right through that metal and then unscrew your punch. And there is your hole. The great thing about the screw down hole punch is that you don't have to worry about any marring or uh, puckering in the back of your desk. You're nice and smooth and soft, all right? So personal preference, what you want to use today. Um, again, if you're a beginner, I suggest you using the Alchemy. If you're more of an advanced stamper, um, I would definitely suggest using your brass. 
totally up to you. So I'm going to, you know what? I am going to use my al my alchemy today. So you're going to want to pull pull out in your sticker guidebook. You're going to want to pull out your straight stickers. Okay. And these are bracelets. Where is my sticker? Got back up. There we go. Okay. So you could use either or. If you have bracelet blank guides at home, feel free to use them. If you feel that they're too long, you could always take, give a rip down the center and there is a smaller blank, personal preference, totally up to you. Um, or you could come in with your sticker guidebook and let me grab that. And that has a mixture of different, um, different stamps in it. Let's grab it. I was using it earlier today. All right. And your sticker guide book has um, a few different stickers in it. And let's open that up. You have the straight sticker, just like your bracelet blank sticker guide book. All right. You have your circle guides and then your clear guide. So these are your circle guides. These are to help you stamp around and underneath your disc, okay? They come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large, and extra large, okay? Then you have your straight stickers, okay? And this is to make sure that your spacing and your word is even and straight, okay? And your spaces are perfect. So that's what we're gonna use today. So if you have your sticker guides, your bracelet guides, you could take one, rip it in half, or you could use your sticker guides, your, in your sticker guide book, your straightaways that are smaller. All right, so I'm gonna come into the middle of my desk. You could measure, you could eyeball, completely up to you. But that center disc is gonna have a name in it, on it. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do, and I'm just gonna hold this up for, the ca for camera purposes. I like to take that orange line and not stick my sticker to my blank yet. I like to just line it up with some space in between so I know where my center is. And then I just drag it down, okay? There we go. So I'm lined up in the center with my orange line and I'm straight across my disc. And I'm just going to literally put it right on my block. Now, if you have stamp tape, you could always take your stamp tape and put it up top if you feel that you need more, you know, you need your blank to be more secure on your block, up to you. Now I'm gonna come in with the center and the name that I'm gonna use today, let's see, I'm gonna make this for me. So I'm gonna use Samantha. So I have eight letters in Samantha. So I am going to write name, my name down. So here's my Samantha and I am gonna break it in half. All right, so I know my center line is right there. I'm gonna utilize the spaces in between my sticker guides. So I'm gonna start with my, right here, here's my, a, my S, my A, M, A, T, H, A. All right, so I have my Samantha across it. Let's see. There we go. I personally, on these sticker guides, if you're looking to save them and they're not too beaten up, um, you could definitely use a mechanical pencil or a pencil because it's easy for you to erase. That's my little tip and trick for the day. All right. You're gonna notice that if you take your font set, the letters are on the shanks, okay? Right here. So when you pull your letter out, because they're in alphabetical order, you wanna make sure to put that letter right back in the spot. I do not practice what I preach and my stamps and my letters are all over the place. So you definitely wanna make sure when you pull an A out, you put it right back in the A slot. All right, let me move my chain. So I'm going to start with, let's see, I think I want to go, I think I want to go all lowercase with my name, okay, and then utilize um, the uppercase for my initials. 
All right. And now again, this is personal preference. It's completely up to you what you want to use, but I feel like I want to use, I want to use my lowercase for my name across. So I'm going to start and I'm going to take my S out. Okay. And you always want to make sure that the impress art is facing you. That's how you know you're stamping in the right direction. It kind of takes the guesswork out of, you know, keep on having to move your stamp up and down to see if you're in the right direction. So having that indicator mark on the shank really is a fantastic thing. So I'm gonna bring this down, okay? When you're stamping, you always wanna make sure that you are set up with your block in your center, your font set in front of you or to your left or to your right, depending on what, you know, if you're righty or lefty and your hammer in your non, your dominant side. So I'm a righty. My hammer's on my right side. My stamp is always in my left hand, all right? It's very important that you line up your stamps with your non-dominant hand because if you line it up and then switch, what do you think happens? You get all wonky, it goes lopsided, and now you have to um, feel that restriction in that tape all over again. So once you get a hang of having your stamp in your non-dominant hand and lining that up, you're good to go. So I'm gonna place that flat stamp in my non-dominant hand. I'm gonna lightly drag it down and I'm gonna match it with the corresponding letter on my sticker guide. If you're having a hard time finding the center, you could always take a Sharpie marker and run a line down the center of your shank, okay? So it's easier, and let me bring this down a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see. Okay, it's easier to have that line right in between those hash marks lined up with your corresponding letter on your sticker guide. So I'm going to place it flat, lightly drag that, line that up, take my hammer and give it a nice hit. And there is my S. All right, and I'm going to continue. There is my A. Place it down, lightly drag it, give it a nice tap. Now, if you are working in brass, brass is a harder metal to use. It's a harder metal to stamp into. So you're gonna need something called the, the tilt and tap technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove this really quick, bring my sticker guide back to my center here, okay? And if you are using, If you are using the brass, you're going to do a technique called tilt and tap. So again, I'm going to place my L down, okay? I'm going to press hard on my stamp. Once I feel that I'm pressed and I'm all set, ready to go, I'm going to hit it once on top. I'm going to tilt the stamp towards me and hit it. Tilt it away from me, hit it, side, side. And that's going to give you a nice and even impression yeah. all around. Because your brass is a harder metal, it is harder to stamp into. So that one hit that I was showing with the alchemy, you're going to have to have a little bit more force with the brass. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on this. I'm lining it up, bringing it down. And once, bringing it back, forward, side, side. To get all of my impression in my metal. All right, so depending on what you're working with. What metal you're working with, even if you have the copper, which is that rose gold color. That's a harder metal as well. But you're definitely going to want to do that tilt and tap to get all of your impression in there. All right. So I'm going to continue with my name. So let's bring out, let's see my M. My A. My N. I'm 
my tea. H. And again, my A. Remember, when you're dragging down, you want to feel that restriction. That sticker creates a ledge if you run your finger down, okay? Once you feel that stamp catch the edge of that tape, that's when you want to press down with your stamp and hit it. All right. So here is my Samantha on my necklace. Okay. So I am going to come in with my enamel marker. First, I want to polish this up a little bit. Let's not skip a step. I'm going to come in with my buffing block. I'm going to start with my fine side first. And I'm going to run it over. And I'm just going to do one side to show you the difference between a polished blank and a non-polished blank. Then I'm going to move to my super fine. So I hope you guys could see the difference between polished and non-polished. Okay, so this is a high polishing finish block. So you see that difference in the metal. I'm gonna turn it around, go over it again on my other side. And I'm just gonna bring it back and I'm gonna work it across the entire disc. Then I'm gonna take my super fine and run it over. Now remember, when you're making a necklace, you also wanna pay attention to your sides. So you wanna run your sides over. All right. And your back, because nobody wants a necklace with an ugly back. So we're just going to take that and run it over and shine that up some too. And you could see the difference in that. Do you guys see the difference? Besides just seeing me in, in the blank? but you see the difference between polishing and non-polishing. All right, let me come back in. I like to polish twice, halfway through the project, and then I like to polish towards the end, okay? I'm gonna take my enamel marker and I'm gonna run it over. Filling in all those stamped impressions. Okay, then I'm going to just place it down, let it dry for a few. I'm going to take a regular household paper towel. I'm going to lightly dab my piece, and you'll see that it starts to stay, really stay inside that impression. So I'm lightly dabbing, okay? And then I'm lightly wiping, lightly wiping, okay? And you could see how that enamel stays inside of my impression. Just like that. So I have my Samantha. I'm spaced out, I'm in the line and I'm spaced out. So I utilize the hash marks between the orange and the black lines on my sticker guide and have really nice spacing through my name. All right, so that's our first disc. I'm gonna place that aside. Are there any questions? You guys are quiet. <laughs> Very quiet today. No. So Raven asked what I use to darken the impression. So I use the Impress Art enamel marker. Guys, this um, enamel marker is formulated to stay inside of your impressions. Um, I know we get a lot of questions. Oh, can I use um, acrylic paint? Can I use um, a Sharpie marker? Um, and we would prefer you not to only because this stamp enamel was formulated to stay inside your impressions and coagulate. It, it forms a bond to the metal inside of your impressions and stays in there, okay? If, so the question from, let's see, I got a question here. Um, sea monster, is that a, is that a cookie, like 
Cookie Monster. That's cute. <laughs> you had a, a strong Long Island accent, though. <laughs> what? They said you had a strong Long Island accent. Before. Oh, no. yeah, I do have it. <laughs> Jen doesn't have one, but I, I have a very, very heavy Long Island accent. <laughs> I see that now. Okay, so let's go back. So question, um, if the first pass is not dark enough, can you fill it in right away or should you drive between coats? No, oh, you have family and quorum. Okay, so that, that's how you know how bad my accent is. So uh, you could definitely fill it in again. All right, um, I suggest once you fill it in, give it like a minute or so, let it settle. And then if you want it darker, go back in and you know you could hit it again. All right, but remember guys, so this is what I wanna tell you is that if your enamel is not staying in your impression, it's because your impressions are not deep enough or you are wiping too hard, all right? So definitely make sure that you have a nice, deep and even impression, okay, um, to, you know, make, make sure that your enamel stays in your impressions. All right. Um, let's see. I am white. Um, about dragging the stamp too hard and leaving a line. Okay. So when you drag that stamp, okay. How to prevent the drag lines from the letter stamps. I must have dragged too hard on aluminum. Okay, Cindy. So how to get that out is you're going to come in with your your sanding block, your medium side only. And you're gonna have to mat that side and then repolish it again to try to get those tiny scratches out. All right. So now we're gonna come to our little tag. Let's see. And we are gonna use the last initial. So now what you need to do, if you are a beginner, I am gonna come in with the Alchemy with this. You want to use your stamp tape and just really tape the top of your blank, okay? Then I'm gonna come in with my initial, uh, my last initial, I'm gonna come in with a P. And again, you wanna make sure that your impress art is facing you. Now you could do this one of two ways. You can just go rogue and eyeball it and look to see that your stamp is in the center, or you could come back in with your sticker guide. Now with your sticker guide, the good thing about using the sticker guide on this blank is that it is a quarter inch blank and if you line that up between the two orange lines, you'll see that it meets the edges of your metal, okay? Then you have that line, black line in the center. There is your ruler mark. So I'm gonna put my P there. So it's completely up to you whether you wanna just eyeball it or you could use your sticker guides for it. Now remember, the, the sticker guide I used for love that I stamped earlier, okay? I'm only using four little allotted slots for it. So I always like to keep my sticker guides because when you're doing initials, you could reuse it, all right? So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna line that up. If you're having problems again, I'm gonna find my center, all right? And in this case, you could see how nicely um, putting a line in the center of your stamp works very well because do you see how I'm just lining that? Let's bring this down a little bit. I'm lining that right up with the line on my stamp. So I'm gonna take it, take my hammer, press down, give it a nice hit, and there is my P. Okay, again, if you are using your brass, you're going to want to make sure that you tilt and tap that. So now I'm gonna pull off my stamp tape. And I'm gonna come in with my buffing block. I'm gonna run it over.
polish it, polish the sides. Don't forget the back. Now, you're forging into metal and sometimes you get that little wonky bubble there because maybe you stamped a little too hard or it was a very narrow piece of metal. There are two ways to get rid of that bump. One way is taking your, meat, your core side, okay, of your sanding block and hitting that area, okay, until it's nice and flat. Or if you have the multifunction hammer, okay, which is this hammer right here, with the chasing head, you're just going to give it a little tap. And from hitting one part of your blank up against the steel block, it is going to straighten that out for you. So you don't want to be too aggressive with it, but very light taps. And you're going to see you're completely flush and back to normal. So I'm going to come in with my enamel marker. I'm going to run that over my P, making sure to fill that in very, very well. And for those of you who are using the brass, I'm going to come in and fill in my brass as well. Now your brass, your aluminum, your alchemy, and your copper at Michaels are all pre-debored and tumbled for you, creating a really nice shine to begin with. Sometimes with the brass and the copper, um, the enamel maybe beads up a little bit. So with your brass and your copper, you just wanna make sure to really fill that in nicely. All right, give it adequate time to dry. You wanna pat it very lightly. All right, and then lightly wipe. All right, and then I could come in again and I could fill it in again if I'd like. So we're gonna troubleshoot just filling it in with the enamel and walking away for a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how you can clean up your enamel on your disc after. So I'm gonna come in and take the enamel off of my P. And there we go. We have a really nice and deep P on there. I'm gonna place that aside. And I want more of a mixed metals necklace. So I am going to mix on my brass. I'm gonna mix my aluminum, my alchemy and my brass for my jumble necklace, okay? You could keep it all one tone if you'd like, but I think I'm gonna actually come in and hit this again with my enamel marker. Cause I just want it a little bit deeper. And I'm gonna set that aside and let that dry. Now, when you're working with your, um, your bar, okay, um, you could do this one of two ways. You can measure and mark it with a, with a ruler. What I like to do is I like to use two sticker guides. All right, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna place one sticker guide on my block. Okay, then I'm gonna come in and you're gonna see it does create a ledge. All right, just like where the stamp st stays. And I'm gonna just line it up from the top to the bottom. And then I'm gonna come in with my sticker guide. There we go. And this is where I'm going to put my initials. So I'm gonna come up. So I want to have my R and my S. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. And I see that my daughter was in my stamps. So mm -hmm. I have to have it, <laughs> cause I'm missing her initials. I don't know if you noticed that my uppercase, I'm totally missing my daughter's initials out of there. So, um, Right here, I have my ampersand. So I'm gonna just pull that out and put that here. I'm gonna pull out my R and my S. 
All right. And I am going to mark where I want it on my sticker. Now you could use this sticker and mark it. Um, I like to use it vertically. So I'm going to come in. And if you don't have an ampersand and you have the heart, um, Michael's has this dare, um, cutest pack of three hearts. And I believe what, Jen, do you remember the measurements of the smallest one? Where is that? I know I have it here. Millimeter, 2.5 millimeter. And I want to say 1.5 millimeter. I think it's 1.5. So it's the cutest little, do I have it here? I know I, I think it's, yes. So the cutest little 1.5 heart. Does everybody see that? It's so cute. So if you have a design stamp heart that you want to use in there, please feel free to use that. All right. I'm going to use the ampersand from the set. So I'm going to come in and I know I want my ampersand right about here. Okay. So I'm going to mark my sticker. All right. And remember when I'm marking it, I want it on the yellow, on the orange line. So I'm going to come in here with my R and then I'm going to come in here with my S. So I'm going to start. So now I want my R to sit on top of my black line. So I'm going to line up my sticker. Once I line it up, I will show you guys. Okay. Any day now, which you love when you have a plan and like <laughs> kind of falls apart. <laughs> so here you go. So remember what I said before that your, um, it's a quarter inch. So it fits between the two orange lines. So the center is my black. So I know I want my R right here. So I line that right up, okay? And then I know that my R is gonna sit right in the center here. I'm gonna take my R, line it up, give it a nice hit. And it's sitting right on that line. Then I'm going to take my sticker, okay? And I'm going to come in again on my black line, making sure that my middle black is in the middle of the two oranges. I'm going to take my ampersand, make sure that it's facing me, Center it, bring it down. Now with the ampersand, even in the um, softer metals, you wanna make sure that you tilt and tap it because it's got a lot going on there. It's a really wide design, okay? And it's kind of really stretched out. So you want to pay attention to that. You wanna tilt and tap it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it down. I'm lining it up. I'm feeling that restriction. I'm pressing down. I'm gonna give it a nice hit once. Bring it forward, back, side. Now, as I'm swaying it, I am not picking it up off the metal. I still have pressure on it. It's just the motion of pressing down and just tilting side, 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 side. Okay, so when I pull it off, there is my ampersand. Then I'm gonna come back in for my S. All right, I'm gonna make sure that my metal's in between the two orange lines. I'm gonna pick up my S right in the center. Give it a nice tilt and tap. So I'm really even. Now, again, like we said, when we're forging to metal, we get that little bump right there. And that's only because when you're forging into metal, it spreads, it's got no place to go. All right, so I'm gonna take my blank. I'm going to give it a couple of nice taps. I'm not being too aggressive. I know it's hard to see um, the force that I'm using while on a Zoom call, but it might sound worse than it does. It's basically a very light tap, and you can see it brings your metal right back to where you came from.
Any questions yet? Nothing, but I we always do this at the end, but you're gonna have to show the four different enamel marker colors. Oh, okay. All right, we could definitely do that. We could definitely do that. Are we getting enamel questions? <laughs> um, someone asked about the different colors and they've never seen them at Michael's. Um, oh, okay, so I'll have to show you those. So again, I'm coloring in. All right, I'm gonna put that to the side. We're just gonna come back to the love and the Samantha that we stamped. And I just want to troubleshoot because I am, you know, some of us are super busy and we walk away from stuff and then we come back. So if your enamel happens to dry on your piece and you cannot remove it, what you're going to do is you're going to take your enamel marker again. You're going to run it right over, wet it with your enamel and then lightly wipe. Enamel takes off your excess enamel from your disc, all right? So remember that when you are stamping, enamel takes enamel off. So even if you walked away, and you left it, and it dried on, definitely keep in mind that if you hit it again with your enamel marker, it will take it off. All right, and there is our love. I'm gonna push these aside. I'm gonna come back in, lightly dab that, and lightly wipe. And there is our necklace. All right, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna polish this up a little bit. By rubbing my buffing block over it, my polishing block. All right. And we are gonna put some jump rings on and our chain. And then we will go over enamels. I'm gonna pull some of my jump rings out. And what I'm gonna do, because I'm mixing all the metals, I'm just going to really highlight that gold color. And I'm gonna go with all gold tone jump rings to give it a little bit of pizzazz, right? Very important when you're doing jump rings is that you wanna make sure that the slit is facing the ceiling, that opening, okay? You wanna use two needle nose pliers and you never wanna pull apart. You want to laterally twist it. When you pull your jump rings apart, you compromise the metal in that center. And if your jump ring is plated, you will crack the plating on it. So it's very important that when you open your jump rings, you laterally twist. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to put my neck, oops, here we go. I'm going to slide my ball chain through. Again, take it at the top, laterally twist it close and you will hear a, you know, you'll hear a little click, okay? You always wanna make sure, it's definitely my pet peeve that your jump rings are even and nicely closed. Open up laterally. You're going to put your metal on it. Take your jump ring and twist that closed, all right, just like that. And same for the third. Open that up. Place your metal on your jump ring. Put your chain through, take your pliers and twist it closed. And there, my friends, is your family jumble necklace. 
All right. And I think it just looks, it gives it something when you mix your metals. You know, I happen to really like mixed metals. You could do it all in one tone, totally up to you. Um, Lindsay, why not put all one on a jump ring? Um, the reason why I don't put them all on a jump ring is one, they will not sit nicely on a seven millimeter jump ring altogether because of thickness in the metal. And two, I want them to move back and forth so you can see the P and the R and the S and the SAM. If I put them all on one jump ring, I'll be covering Samantha. And I just, you know, I, I would rather not do that. All right. So here is your necklace. Now we'll talk about some enamel since we had that question before. And I'm just going to stamp some impressions in here so we can see what the enamel looks like. So I'm gonna take the music note that is in the set and I'm just gonna go around the bottom of my disc so we could see so that's we know the black so we have the green and the silver and we'll stamp the brown and then i'll bring out a piece of let's see do i have a scrap piece there we go i'll bring out silver piece to stamp the gold marker on it. I think we'll start off with the gold. So the enamel is available in different colors and we all know the black is one of them. All right, we have black, silver, brown, and gold. So let's play with the gold first. Now with these markers, you definitely want to, um, depending your personal preference, you might wanna give it more than one coat, okay? So there is the gold. The gold is very nice because it has a metal flake in it. So I'm just going to put that enamel on that marker. And I'm gonna come in with the green, which is like a green blue. And I'm gonna fill in that impression there. I think I'm gonna come in with a second coat for that blue. And here is my brown. And I'm gonna fill in my silver. The silver is definitely a favorite of mine in the gold, in the, um, in the brass material. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna come in to my gold marker, lightly dab, lightly wipe. And you're gonna see how pretty that gold looks in that impression. And it really, I know it's very hard to see on here, but if you go to impressart.com, you'll be able to see different pieces in the inspiration gallery um, that use, you know, we use the gold enamel in. Jen, could you see that? Can you see the gold uh, yeah. enamel? Yes, I can. Okay. So I'll put that aside. I'm gonna come back in with my blue a little bit my blue green and give it another coat. Uh, we have someone asking if the enamel needs to be sealed on our blanks. No, nope. And here is the silver. So you could see how nice that looks. It gives it just enough of a metal flake silver in there, all right. And then the brown, now the brown is nice because brown you could go, um, oh, did I lose you guys? Oh, you're back, no, you went. Yeah, so you could go as light as like a, um, a cayenne brown 
or as dark as a chocolate brown, depending on the amount of layers of the brown you put on. The blue, the blue green looks really nice in that also. Is it hard to see it, Jen, because it's so bright in here? Uh, a little, I mean, I could see it, a, but uh, I can see if people don't know what they're looking for, it could be a little bit hard. Can you bring it closer to the camera, maybe? Mm. Yeah, it's hard with the, you know, it's- If you go on our website, my husband <coughs> has two in our um, enamel marker product listing, we do have more pictures of what the enamel actually looks yeah, like. Yeah, it's hard to do it when I'm on my phone. It's harder to get, you know, um, a nice clear picture. But let's see, maybe, maybe, maybe if I use a texture plate, let's see. What do you think? Do you have time? We have a couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, Linda was asking, why can't you just use paint markers? So paint markers aren't formulated to stay in your impression. And we live in a age right now of antibacterial, um, essential oils, perfume, anything with alcohol is gonna pull your enamel marker out. This enamel marker is, you know, it, it's designed for metal. All right, so I don't know if you could see the blue green any better here. I think you can, right, Jen? Yeah, the bigger surface helps. Yeah. So lightly dab it. And lightly wipe. And it leaves a really nice hint of bluish green inside of your impressions. Your gold does the same. I think you'll be able to see the gold better here. We had Sandra um, ask a question that she's stamping on our brass blanks for this project and the back of the brass blank turned a grayish color. Is she doing something wrong? No, I don't, that, could, could she show us? Is her camera on? Um, let me see if I can find her. If not, Sandra, you can definitely DM us on social media after the class. Um, so further troubleshoot it. I don't know if maybe your brass blank is like tarnished before you started stamping maybe that it needed to be polished. Um, but so the, the makeup of these blanks, okay, um, they are not plated. They are a jeweler's brass and a jeweler's copper and an alchemy. The, yellow, the, the um, silver is either an aluminum that you're using or a tin-based alloy similar to pewter, which is called alchemy. And the best thing about these blanks is the copper and the brass are jeweler's quality brass and copper. So you could always polish them back up. So I'm not sure if you have a little bit of tarnish on the back of your blank. I am not sure, but if you could send us a picture, we could better um, help you with that. I have the windows open today and nothing is drawn. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely dry time depends on the location of yes located based on climates. We do travel to places that are more dry, so things dry faster versus a like a wetter climate or somewhere near the water. We'll take right. Care. Okay. And there we go. So you could see how nice that brown looks in that impression. All right. So Jen, I think it's that time. What do you think? I think so. All right, let me pull that out.
Let's see. Put you guys back in here. Um, I think there was a question. Um, you can repolish after wiping in away the enamel at the excess enamel. You can. Um, so Alchemy is our brand um, of metal. It's a tin-based alloy similar to pewter. It's a sterling silver alternative, a typo allergenic. Um, it doesn't corrode. It does not tarnish. All right, but it is a specific metal to impress art. So let's see. Hi, Lisa. Hi, yes. Linda. Is our favorite part. It's our favorite part. Let's see. Good let's job. see, Lisa. Nice Thank job. You. Oh, I'm missing Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Nice. Lisa. Let's I see. Roseanne Zito. Hi, Roseanne. <laughs> Brenda, I know you. I, I, I stalk you later. Hi, Gail. Look at your beautiful faces. I love it. I love that I get to see you guys. Hello. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Maria. Adam Rose. How are you? Mary's <laughs> chilling outside in like a canopy of some I, Oh my God, Mary. I am so jealous. Are you in your yard? <laughs> oh my God. I'm jealous. Hi, Angela. Hi, Linda. So it's so great to see you guys. I love seeing your faces. All right. So I think the next class is Jen. Jen, Jen is such an important part of my brain. I know. Um, I want to say it is April 8th or the 15th. Okay. Um, so we're going to go with April. Yeah. So hopefully it's not a rainy April and we're all super happy and very excited about stamping our way through the spring into the summer. Um, so again, Jen told you about our, our Facebook live classes. All right. So we would love to see you guys on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1230 April showers, bring me flowers. I get it, but I could deal without the rain in okay. April. Totally. So have a wonderful holiday season. Um, I guess next week, week after, my daughter's on spring break, so I should be going crazy and maybe, you know, get the kids to do some metal stamping outside because I'm so jealous that she's laying in a hammock right now, Jen, right? Could you imagine? Yeah. So the next so, class, okay, the next class is April 22nd, I lied. April 22nd. Oh, that's far. Okay, so April 22nd. At um, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 2 p.m. Central, and we're making a textured wall hanging. Oh, oh those wall hangings are my favorite. Mm -hmm. And if you've done these, if you've done these textured wall hangings with me before, we're gonna do it a little bit different because, of course, I went on a spending spree at Michael's and got a bunch of stuff that we could incorporate in that. So I know a lot of you have done that wall hanging with Jen and I again but we're gonna, we're gonna switch it up a little bit this time. So get ready and we will see you guys soon. Thanks so much for joining.